I never thought I would do a write-up here, but this case grabbed me as soon as I heard about it a year or so ago. There was already one done by Robin Warder promoting his podcast, which is very good, but I decided to do some internet sleuthing to get as far to the bottom of it as possible, as a lot of people when summarizing the story fall prey to a lot of misconceptions, specifically about the Orthodox Jewish angle, Unsolved Mysteries made it seem like freaking fiddler on the roof. I'm a member of the same religious group as Chaim, my rabbi actually attended the same school as him, though many years before, and my brother currently attends a similar school, so this case really hit home. Not to mention the brutality of the crime it's hard to imagine how anyone could commit murder in such a bloody and unhinged manner. The facts, Chaim, pronounced K-H-I-M, Weiss was a 15-year-old Orthodox Jewish student at the yeshiva slash mesivta of Long Beach, a high school and post-high school yeshiva boys religious school, in Long Beach, Nassau County, New York. He was by all accounts very intelligent and well-liked and didn't have any known enemies. He dormed at the yeshiva and, uniquely, had his own bedroom something which people after the fact said was due to his academic achievement. All other boys lived in shared rooms. He was on the third floor and had a window in his room, not connected to a fire escape, though there was one on the other end of the hall. The doors to the dorm building were securely locked. Friday, October 31, Saturday, November 1st, Chaim, along with the rest of the school, was in the dorm for the Sabbath. Friday night, after prayers and dinner, Chaim went to his room and was later, at about 1 p.m., seen reading in the hallway. The lights were off in the room and on in the hall. This is very typical on the Sabbath. The next morning, a dorm counselor knocked on his door to remind him that he had to attend prayers and discovered Chaim's body. The first appearances indicated that he had been bludgeoned to death. The police were immediately called. Investigation later discovered that Heim's body had been moved twice after his murder from the bed to different positions on the floor. He also had not been bludgeoned but rather hacked with a hatchet, as there were several cuts found on his head. The window of his room was found open. The police investigated the school and interrogated and polygraphed the teachers and many of the students, all of whom passed the examinations. A coroner stated that the injuries which Chaim had received were similar to those found in two other murder victims in the area however, the modus operandi was entirely different, the other two victims were elderly and in their own homes. The police were convinced that the murderer must have been familiar with the school in order to commit the crime. Anton Weiss, Chaim's father, later sued the school for $15 million for not keeping his son safe, the suit was later settled. In 2013, the case was reopened, and many people were re-interviewed. By 2015, the police announced that they were convinced that the murder was an inside job by someone in the yeshiva. However, they did not name any suspects or produce any new evidence. The random details, people love random details, especially when they're of a bizarre religious nature. Some write-ups of the crime include these details, which I personally think are basically irrelevant. His body being on the floor and his window being opened were seen as part of Orthodox Jewish death rituals. Emo this is possible but that would indicate that the perpetrator was either someone who was very well versed in rabbinic or someone who had just personally had a close experience with death, as most Orthodox Jews do not know these laws. There was a mysterious candle found with his body. This is not true, as it happens, but is rather a misrepresentation of the actual situation. After Heim's body was found, and after the Sabbath, when it is forbidden to light candles, the school lit a memorial candle in Heim's room. One day a few days into the investigation, Despite the fact that the room was guarded by police, a second lit candle was found in the room. However, this seems to have no connection to the case and people involved seem to agree that an absent-minded rabbi accidentally lit a second candle without people realizing. Unsolved Mysteries mentioned a mysterious man seen on the pier near the school early Saturday morning, who may have been a student of the school and may have had a connection to the crime. I don't know whether he was ever located but I've seen no reason to believe that he had any connection to the case. Friday was Halloween, a time when, historically, Jews had sometimes had problems with anti-Semitic egging, gang violence, etc. My father has stories from his yeshiva experience ten years earlier. The school stated a belief that the attack was anti-Semitic ally motivated due to Halloween and that the attacker snuck in and out of the building and murdered Hayam. While this can't be discounted fully, it seems unlikely as one student was targeted and the murder seemed to be done by people familiar with the school building. According to students, Chaim had had a run-in with a school janitor. Some in the school therefore believed that he had come into the building to kill him out of revenge. 
The police investigated the janitor and cleared him of suspicion. A boy in a nearby dorm room claimed to have seen someone open and close his dorm room in the middle of the night as though he was looking in the different rooms for a specific person. If this is reliable, due to the student's half-asleep state it might not be, and if this person was the murderer, this could indicate either that the murderer was an outsider who didn't know his name around or that, if the person was an insider, he wasn't familiar with which room was Himes. Alternatively, he could have been making sure that nobody was awake to potentially witness the crime. A few years after the crime, Himes' family got an Easter card addressed to him which said, Know what happens to chickens when they get too old to lay Easter eggs? They die. Happy Easter. There were no other indications on the card as to the sender, and this doesn't seem to be a helpful clue. There was also some weird etching on Himes' gravestone I wrote about it at length in comments here https colon slash slash www.reddit.com slash r slash unresolved mystery slash comments slash 7bb6 of slash unresolved murder have a in a long form slash. I don't believe they have any bearing on the case. On Unsolved Mysteries and in other media. The detectives on the case made it seem as though the yeshiva's staff and students were deliberately unhelpful for religious reasons. First of all, as mentioned above the yeshiva was in fact fully helpful to the police in terms of allowing interviews and closing off the dorm for months for investigators. Secondly, the idea that religious reasons would prevent them from speaking is not far-fetched the two laws which could theoretically be meant are Lashon Hara, speaking ill about another, and Messiah snitching to the authorities. I personally believe that the second is ridiculous, this is a murder, after all, the first could have had an impact on people feeling less inclined to air suspicion about people who they may have only had vaguely weird feelings about. That said, I don't think it's a significant factor, due to the seriousness of the case. So what, do I think, happened? As mentioned above, police currently believe, though they have shared no specific evidence, that the murder was committed by Yeshiva Insider. The question is why? On internet message boards I have seen several theories about potential homosexual relationships and love affairs between students which led to a murder. Perhaps, though this is complete speculation and none of the proponents of these theories can give any evidence besides boys in boarding school. Others say the same thing about potential fighting over a girlfriend, which I find ridiculous because a, the boys were dorming and wouldn't share a social group from home b, the school would never give them the freedom to socialize with girls in Long Beach so that they would know girls in common and see, that I just think it's out of character for those sorts of kids but I'm prepared to be wrong. There are two more clues which I think can possibly be linked. I have seen on several comments sections and chat rooms that apparently, a boy hanged himself in a bathroom at Long Beach. I don't remember seeing his name or any reason which was given for the suicide, but it's suggestive. Last year, Anton Weiss gave an interview to a local news station about how a few months before the murder, Haim called him crying from summer camp, though he later seemed fine and that in August, Rabbi Avram Cooper, the school principal, called to ask to meet with Hyam and later did in fact meet with him at his home. Hyam didn't reveal what he discussed with Rabbi Cooper, who refused to talk to reporters in the news segment. My theory is that Hyam was being sexually abused by someone in a position of authority, if not in the yeshiva then possibly in camp. Sadly, this is a problem which has certainly been present in the Orthodox Jewish community, and has been swept under the rug in the past. What seems likely to me is that an older boy, perhaps a dorm counselor, though not necessarily the one who found him, or young teacher was grooming and abusing him, and that Rabbi Cooper was either investigating or covering for the abuser, leading to his wish to speak to Hyam. The thing is that there is a massive gap between abusing someone and murdering them with a hatchet and I believe that this is why a people who may have known or had an inkling about abuse might have passed a polygraph, because they genuinely did not believe that the events were related and b. Rabbi Cooper might not have wanted to talk about the abuser, given that even if he genuinely thought he was an abuser, he didn't think he was a murderer. In fact, it seems crazy even to me I have never before heard of an abuse case in the Orthodox Jewish community that led to murder, particularly murder so violent. However, that is where the evidence seems to lead me. Supporting the possibility that the abuser was someone in the school is that another boy committed suicide while there is no indication that this boy was abused, it's not impossible to imagine and we know that this is the second death in not so many years in a freaking boys' school. I believe that the abuser was an older student, students can be up to their mid-twenties or even older in the post-high school division, or very young rabbi because someone obviously old-looking might have seemed more conspicuous in the dorm building if discovered. The problem is that I still cannot understand how it led to murder. The most interesting question for me is where the hatchet came from, I haven't found any information on that, and I find it fascinating 
because the average suburban New Yorker doesn't exactly carry one around and there are much more obvious and readily available murder weapons. I also want to know whether they have any poise, as they haven't announced any. Heim's tragedy is a horrifying reminder to me that as much as I want to believe that religion is good and its practitioners are peaceful, horrible things like this can still happen but it's disturbing to think that someone in my community could be a cold-blooded murderer. Chaim didn't deserve this, and if he had lived he would be in his late 40s, probably with teenage children and maybe even with a grandkid or two. Yeah he's Ikro Baruch, may his memory be blessed. Also, if anyone is interested in the case and has questions about the religious angle, please ask me and I'll see if I can help. News coverage often makes it seem a lot more mysterious and arcane than it actually is. Edited, I did a bit more reading just now and a couple of things I want to add. Anton Weiss, in the same interview, though it didn't make it onto the TV segment, which is why I didn't see it, said that when he sued the school, Rabbi Cooper actually told him that the murder happened because of something which his family did. Another possibility which I actually think could be just as valid is the possibility that Chaim was being abused himself. He could have been the witness to someone else being abused or something of that nature. Thanks for the informative write-up. I had seen mention of this case but with much less information. I have known a number of Jewish people in my life, but my contact and understanding of Orthodox customs is practically zero. I know there is a small Orthodox community near where I live, but they pretty much stay out of the public view. Sometimes seeing a case in the cultural surroundings helps to bring clarity. I think abuse could have been at the root of the crime. While you are right that murder does not usually follow abuse, well sometimes it does and abuse itself is a violent crime, a violation of a person's body against their will. We have also seen how many times people in positions of power over young people have been abusers. There is no cultural or religious separation from this and happens in secular organizations as well. I feel terrible for the Weiss family, and for Heim. To put their trust in a school, and a religious one at that, that their son would be well taken care of, and then for him to be murdered, and possibly sexually abused that's just unspeakably horrific. I did a little further reading on this after you posted. I find it very strange that Rabbi Cooper would call Heim to his personal home, and not allow the parents inside, they were told to wait outside. While the meeting was only 10 minutes long, what does that say? There's something very fishy there to me, as an outsider. In the interview you mentioned, Anton Wise says that Rabbi Cooper had also called the family home several times over a few weeks asking for the meeting, but Heim was out of the country at the time. What could have been that important? I'm left with a few questions from my limited exposure. I haven't really been able to read in depth that side of your post here, so maybe you can shed some light? I wonder what role Rabbi Cooper had in the case. Was he interviewed by the police at any length? He seems like a reasonable ploy to me. Could he have been Heim's abuser? Do you mention you think his abuser would have been a young rabbi or older student, for reasons that they wouldn't be seen as out of place in the dorm, would any rabbi in the dorm be cause for suspicion? I imagine rabbis would come to the dorm sometimes to make sure things are in working order, or that rules are being followed. I don't know the hierarchy of the staff at the time, but it seems reasonable to me. I suppose since the murder happened late at night early in the morning that it would have been suspicious but most kids would have been asleep. Could the abuser have hired someone to come and commit the murder? The abuser would be able to tell them where Heim's room was. Do we know if Heim was asleep when he was murdered? I feel like that must be the case, since there's no mention of screams or a struggle. No one else seems to have mentioned the thought that occurred to me. That the dead boy was actually the abuser. That would explain why the rabbi urgently needed to speak to him confidentially, if someone had made a claim against him. Also, the comment about their family being responsible for what happened to him and the severity and nature of the wound suggest a very angry response and something personal. Has anyone ever suggested he might be an offender who was the recipient of revenge? Good write-up elf you thinks this was a hatchet? Possibly a small axe used to cut wood? If so this can easily be concealed. Hacked to death? Clearly he had to have been dead before, no? As to no screams heard. Any size on wounds to see size or type of hatchet? No security footage. Body was moved a few times no evidence or clues found anywhere, killed him on the bed, then dragged him to the floor. Seems it had to be someone who knew of the holiday observed hours, security and halls outside etc. Very sad indeed. It's late here, I need reread more tomorrow. What a thorough write-up. Thanks for the post. I am curious to know what the rabbi meant by the murder happened, because it's something his family did. Vague statement that needs more answers. Also I would like to know time frames of events if they are available. Would it be possible to break into the school after hours? Were there signs of forced entry? And I'm assuming if a window was open the murderer escaped that way. Was there any reports on forensics? DNA fingerprints? I would assume the murderer wore gloves, but you never know.
Would assume the murderer wore gloves, but you never know. Would assume the murderer wore gloves. So, what's your theory on what happened? Post it in the comments below. Thank you for listening. You can find the original post in r slash unresolved mysteries through the link in the description box below. I like being able to listen to posts when I'm busy doing something else and can't read them. So I made this video for anyone who wants to listen to their reddit posts. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below to get more puzzling mysteries. Hit